Thank you. Thank you. I'm not, re I'm not prepared. I have come here and I'm not prepared. What the heck? What kind of show is this? Hi, Danica. You happy? I've been getting so much sun lately. I look like a lobster. It's been nice outside. So there you go. How's everybody doing? We created our first podcast. You know, it's been months, well, more than a year now that people, some of you have been asking, why don't you do a podcast? You should do a podcast. That's what, you got a successful channel. Hold on, I got to grab another blanket here. Not blanket. Or... You have a successful YouTube channel. It's doing okay. Why don't you do a podcast? And I'm just getting into YouTube here so I can see your questions. And I thought, you know, when people complain about, here we go, hold on, let me just get into it. People complain about. Look at, I'm, I'm listening, I hate it. So what we did is we put our entire John Anderson interview on our first podcast. Got some, got some Bee Gees music for it and very happy with it. Turned out okay, it didn't take a long time to do. And I thought, well, a podcast is like a radio show. And man, I've done a lot of those through the years. So why don't, why don't we do this? So it uh, turned out, like I said, it turned out good. I was happy with it. John Anderson's like one of the greatest interviews I've ever done. I mean, as far as entertainment interviews and just, he was very forthright and talking about uh, yes. And uh, so it was a good interview. So by the way, in the description of this video, you can you can listen to the podcast if you like. So, you know, I, I remember deciding to do it and I went, well, it's basically like a video without the video. So why don't you just do it? Because people have been hounding me saying, hey, you should be doing podcasts. And I'm going, yeah, I don't want to change my direction or my focus. I was just getting all grumpy. I'm going, oh, I want to do a podcast. You can't make me. Well, I did a podcast. Hello, that's from... Prog Rock Dude. Why, well, I like you already. With a name like that. Hello. Nice to have you here. Uh, oh, look, y'all. Look, John. It's the relax. Anyway, Prog Rock Dude. Do you put stuff on your channel? Because, man, you know we do a lot of Prog Rock on this channel quite a bit. I've got uh, uh, Ian Anderson tomorrow. And what I do with my interviews is I usually, I'll, I'll, Take five minutes, five minutes, five, yeah, five minutes. I'll research for five minutes. That'll be a good interview. I uh, research for about five hours before the interview. And one of the reasons I don't look down on my notes an awful lot, because it's fresh in my mind. And that's, I kind of like to be ready in that way. Plus a lot of you have sent us uh, stuff. I don't make videos, sadly. I enjoy your videos though. Thank you. Uh, Prog Rock Dude, what's your, what's your first name? Just curious. So I can say, Hi, Hank, or Martha. Well, you're a dude, so you're probably not. You're not a Martha. It's like, there you go. It's a beautiful day here. We had snow last night, and we woke up to, I'm going, wow. It's been like spring here like crazy in the last few weeks. It's really hot. The dogs have enjoyed walking an awful lot. Um, my, my belly loves it because... You know, I, I'm, I don't have a lot down there, but I try to, you know, slim down for the spring. I think a lot of you do. Anyway, thanks for the folks who are checking out our podcast. It's it's so processed when you're, you know, when you've got a, a channel that does well, like our, we wish we were doing better, but we're doing pretty well. Um, when you have a channel like this, there's a part of you that wants to, part of everyone who does this that wants to diversify and do a whole bunch of different things, right? And you can only ask so much from your audience, but you can grow your audience. So we thought, well, the podcast world, I've done radio specials my entire life. Why not get into that, right? Okay, got some. Hello from Big Toto fan. Oh, in Poland. Mr. Charles. My, uh, my brother's name is Charles. My father's name was Charles. Prague Rock Dude, you can call me Michael. I ain't really comfortable with sharing my real name too much. Oh, no, no worries. But, uh, but hey, this is a place that seems safe, albeit empty, since I'm probably the only one here watching right now. Uh, no, I, we, we don't have a lot. We have 13 people watching. So in the beginning, it's really slow. 
Greetings from Chicago, Stonewall Jackson. Hello, hello. The majority of our audience is in the US, and then Europe, and then probably Canada after that. But with us a lot, when we had, we had a radio station called Rock History Book. And it was on, I think, for four years, five years, I forget. Ask me tomorrow, I'll say three. I, I'm really bad at stuff like that. I, I don't know, it doesn't matter. And 95% of the audience uh, was a U.S. audience. And so when we started all this endeavor, we, we had a mailing list of people already who would listen to the, that channel. And then we had a jazz channel, we had a new age channel. What was the other one? There was four of them. We had four channels running at one point. And, and the only one that was really making a lot of money, well, not a lot, but money, was uh, the Smooth Jazz Channel. Smooth Jazz Now, I used to run that. And that was probably the second big, biggest Smooth Jazz website in the world for, for a few years. And then I just got disenchanted with Smooth Jazz and just thought a lot of what I'm getting is just completely complete crap. Don't get me wrong, but Chuck Loeb's and the four plays, they're all great people and they release great music. The majority of the stuff we, well, all the stuff we played was good, but most of the stuff we got was bad. We just had enough to fill a radio station and do well with it. So, so if you're coming here, uh, it's, it's an exciting day for us with the podcast, a thing that I said I would never do because I just didn't want to change my focus. As I get older, I find, you find this? I mean, as I get older, I find it's harder to change my focus to go from, like my autistic daughter over there, she's, she taught us that on a very structural level that when you have 100% of yourself or as much as you can concentrate on one thing, and then someone asks you a question over here and you have to physically get up and do something or change your focus, it's very, very difficult. That's one of the reasons I didn't want to do a podcast because I thought, well, and do I want to do that? Is it a lot of work? And then I realized a lot of my interviews are big one chunk interviews anyway. Paul Carrick's the next, um, going to be the next guest and that'll be next Thursday. We'll put it up. We're going to start stacking them up now so that I don't have to worry about it. But, and then, um, I think Mark Farner will be coming on of Grant, formerly of Grant Funk. Uh, and slowly, uh, we've got an interview with Burley Drummond, of the drummer of Ambrosia. That's a really good interview. He's, he's very good at interviews. We've never even put that one on. We've not put that one on the uh, Rock History Music or Rock History Book uh, YouTube channels yet. So there you go. It must be a weird time of the day because we don't have a lot of people watching. Ace Rules. Love Ace Rules. Love uh, Paul Carrick. Yeah. Crimson Sky. Thank you. That was a good interview and it, it's done incredibly well for us. We never really know. Like, for instance, when we put uh, 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 the Andy Scott interview up for, for Sweet, I knew it would be popular and successful, but, but I didn't know to that level. So much so that I probably will contact Andy again and we'll probably do another series. Because there's a lot of the earlier hits we never touched on. After, I think we talked for almost two hours, I think. I don't know. I've done so many interviews lately. Like, you know, for instance, with Ian Anderson of Jethro Tull Tomorrow, those interviews are usually 20 minutes. He usually has them stacked. You get 20 minutes and that's it. And that's fine. And Ian's coming on camera again. I think this is our third or fourth. See, my memory is really bad for certain things. Got some questions. Too bad you can't get Satara. I've not, I've not tried Crimson Sky. I've... I've He's retired, and there's, there's, a, there's a reissue of his Warner Brothers stuff that's being released, I think, next month. I doubt it. He doesn't have to. Again, getting out of the mindset. Remember I was saying changing your file, doing something, and then changing the file? I think when you're retired or you've decided to say you're retired, in Peter Cetera's case, it might be that he says, well, I'm not going to come back and talk about my music. I said, I'm retired. I'm Guessing involved in this sort of thing. And I've interviewed people who know him, so. Uh, prog rock gal Carol. Carol Garten Long. Love, yes. The masters of Chase. Chase? Are you expecting are you expecting someone? So, can you check okay, can you check the door, please? It's, it's not, 
Hey, 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 look at, look at, look at, look at this guy. He's just, he's rocking. <laughs> hey, hey. <laughs> Anybody at the door? Some survey. <laughs> Some what? Survey people. How do you know? Because I, I saw them. Are they gone? Yeah. Okay. You know, we have a Havanese, and he's really, really loud. And we love him like crazy, but he's so loud. And I've, I, I, there's a few, a few of you caught it. There's a few interviews I've done where in the middle of it, someone rings the doorbell and I'm downstairs, but you can still hear the dogs. And whenever there's a gap in the interview and the dogs are barking, I'll take them out because it's just so loud, especially with the Havanese. Had no idea that dog would bark so much, but he just does and that's the way it goes. I forget what I was talking about. It was gonna be, uh, it, was, it was awesome. Okay, Carol, that's who I was talking about. Uh, Stonewall Jackson, any chance of interviewing Billy Squire or John Sykes of uh, Blue Murder? I'm not familiar with them. Billy Squire, we could probably get Billy Squire. No. He seemed like he'd be a good interview. I bought the first two albums, and I remember, I remember thinking he, he's not prancing like a rock star. He's got his own style. Prog Rock Dude, yeah, I noticed you planned started this stream at 6.36, unless that's just me or whatever was my notification. What it happens is the second you stream, I don't know if you know this, if you stream on YouTube, it will immediately say this stream is set to start and it's the time it is right now. And then I don't always come on right away. If, you know, some of my colleagues have said you should just say you're gonna stream and wait till some people go on. But I've noticed that if I say, if I say I'm streaming and I don't turn it on right away, I'll see people come and go. So I'm no, I don't want them to go, so anyway. Why did it get so dark on here? That's weird. It just got really dark. Um, it's not dark here, so that's probably... Any chance of interviewing Colin Hay from Men at Work? We have an interview downstairs with Colin that my friend Steve Burgess did. I'm always mentioning this, all these interviews he gave me and I've never had a chance to put any of them up yet because we're so busy with the current interviews. We cannot keep up with the current interviews. Like last week I interviewed three members of Tower of Power. So that was, I think two in one day. And we, we were just busy all last week with interviews. Crazy. But anyway, there you go. Your audio is cutting out. Oh, that's too bad. The podcast is called Rock History Book. It's, the link is in the description of this video. If you wanna to listen to part one with John Anderson, it's in the, the description of this video and you can see it. We're, we've just submitted it to everyone but Apple. We're having problems with the, the Apple website for whatever reason. I go to click it and it's not working out. So it's Rock History Book. Just look that up because I'm writing a book. I decided a few months ago that I would write a book on, on my radio career, but mostly the people I've interviewed and some wacky stuff that people have told me. And plus the... The 80s were a, a, a very fruitful time for me in radio. I got into radio in the 80s and just some of the crazy angst and weird stuff that happened to me. And some good advice. Artists would give me advice now and then. They would come up and they'd tell me stuff. And because they'd see I was nervous or introducing him or something, right? So anyway, the podcast is called Rock History Book. I didn't want to call it Rock History Music because it's, this is kind of an, it will be an extension of the book that I'm putting together. Will I ever finish it? I think so. I think so. Fabulous show you do, John. Best on the web. Uh, Joe, thank you very much. Joe Whalen. New World Man. John S uh, 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 Sykes was primary songwriter of, for Whitesnake. Oh, okay. I'm not that, uh, Whitesnake's another band. Not that familiar with them. Of course, I saw the videos. Happy birthday, Elton John. Yeah, that's right. I saw that on the, uh, on the, one of the news programs. Prog Rock Dude, the audio was cutting out earlier, but it seems to have stopped. I wonder why. And I just did a thing, um, just did an obituary this morning and the audio was terrible on the microphone downstairs. And I was actually using a microphone plugged into my iPhone with nail sheet. 
I don't come on camera and you wouldn't have wanted to see me this morning anyway. Nail Sheet's a good outlet for me just to, and we just reached a thousand subscribers on that channel. Of course, we've got multiple thousands here, but it was just, uh, but we don't have enough hits yet to make money on that channel. You, you need a thousand subscribers, but I think we're at a thousand five or something, but you also need the amount of hits and we've not put a lot of work onto that channel and we're starting to do that now because of course it's another opportunity for us to make money uh, because I want to do this probably for another five to eight years unless something happens, unless I get hit by a bus. So, it's the audio from the, the, the recent uh, uh, interview. Ben Patterson. So yeah, yeah. This is, if you've watched it, you don't have to watch it again. Irene Brophy. Hi, Irene. I haven't heard from you in a while. Hey, John. The, uh, that sounds awesome. Thank you. If anyone wants to um, listen to the podcast, the, 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 um, the link, I'm just phasing, you know, mind, mind blank. It, the link is in the description. We have lots more bee Birdles. But what I've decided to do, B will be on a few videos by himself, like Graham. I'm talking to Graham again at the beginning of April. Uh, um, there's some stuff that he's done that we didn't get a chance to talk about. And I know that, like, we talked for three and a half hours or three hours or whatever it was. I can never remember how long I talked to people. And uh, did you see my daughter? She's went around. She, she's, she's, um, she has this tendency to... Uh, to uh, go to the bathroom, but get ready for it a little too soon. That's, that's our daughter. Thank God that wasn't shown. That would have been, that would have been bad, but she's autistic and that's why she does that, right? She doesn't. Do you have more bee burls? Yes, I do. Subscribe. Thanks. Hollow notes. I've never tried crimson sky. I've never tried for hollow notes. I don't think so. I'm going to have to go over here in case she does want another one of those things. She's autistic and that, you know, with her pulling, you know, getting ready to go to the bathroom, there's nothing, she doesn't even really think about it. Oh, there's my computer. It's beaming in the sky. That's all, that was a lot of our videos coming up. I can't show you, that's top secret. Uh, do you have a green, uh, a green ride with lightning album? What? I'm not sure. Do you have a green ride, the lightning album? I'm not, I, I don't know what that is. Jim Barney, hi John. Hey Jim, how's it going bud? So, man, we've got, uh, for the Canadian channel, we've got uh, Jimmy Rankin, who's one of my all time favorite Canadians, singers. Uh, he was the lead songwriter in the Rankin family, remember Fairly Well Loved, uh, maybe Americans won't know that one as well. We've got Jesse Cook, that's coming up, that's this week. Uh, Murray McLaughlin, we're finally getting back to that and uh, Mark Jordan for the Canadian channel, Rock History Canada, and um, a few more. I can't think of who they are. We've just been so busy with interviews. So with the podcast, it's always going to be a question. If I do an interview, I'm going to put the whole thing on. If you want to listen to the whole interview, download or bring it with you. There you'll have it. You'll be able to listen to it. John Anderson's interview is really cool. It, it turned out really well. Um, I was just thinking... Yeah, uh, Paul Carrick will be number two. And then probably Ian Anderson of Jethro Tull will be part three. Every Thursday, we'll release them probably noon mountain time. Well, not noon, 12.15. They say never release anything at the top of the hour because everyone releases at the top of the hour. So you just stay away from that. Oh, Metallica. Yeah, I'm not a, Meta uh, I'm not a Metallica fan. I'm not a metal fan at all. I appreciate it. I can, no, I get it, but it's just not my kind of music. You know, I had a, a guy on one of the live feeds, he went nuts. He went, how could you not like Metallica? Come on, you either like something or you don't. I don't hate their music. Um, Prog Rock Dude. Yeah, apparently there is an alternate album cover for Metallica's Ride the Lightning that's green instead of blue. I think that's what he's referring to. Okay, I, I didn't know, but thank you. Prog rock dude, you know what's going on. Roger R. What do you think of Toto's 2015 album, 14? Songs like uh, Orphan, All the Tears That Shine, The, the Little Things, and Steve Picaro, lead vocals. Yeah, they, um, I did a video on it. 
right in the beginning of my, <laughs> my video career, I guess you could call it. It wasn't quite at the beginning. I'd been doing it for a few years, but sporadically. So I did one. It's on the uh, Aircom Radio Network channel, which I've not touched in months. But if you look up my name, John Bowden and Toto14, you'll find it. It's a long video. I go through the history of the band. Uh, we did a lot of uh, video tricks that most of which we didn't know what we were doing. Um, Shopping. Um, and the band saw it and the band really liked it. You know, the band reached out to me and thanked me for it. Luke did. Uh, Steve Picaro did. It was nice. It was nice. And it, it really encouraged me to continue on to do more videos. Uh, especially Luke. Luke was very, very, um, he was very nice. So I love that album. First song is the killer. Ben Patterson. I never realized that John Anderson was such a nice guy. He really is. Very easy going. He had just, I've said,